Anyone who's had experience with Alzheimer's disease knows the agony of watching someone fade away as it steals memory and, at the end, a person's own identity. Tonight, we'll show you an experimental way to try and beat back Alzheimer's. It's been tested on just a handful of patients, but it caught our attention because of the doctor involved, Dr. Ali Razai, who 60 Minutes first met 20 years ago. Dr. Razai is a neuroscience pioneer who's developed treatments for Parkinson's disease and other brain disorders. Over the last year, we followed this master of the mind as he attempted to delay the progression of Alzheimer's disease and its worst symptoms using ultrasound. We saw a cutting-edge approach to brain surgery with no cutting. The story will continue in a moment. If we can, we should not be doing brain surgery. You're a brain surgeon. I am, but I should be out of a job because brain surgery, it's cutting the skin, opening the skull. It can be barbaric. I'm gonna go right in there. It looked like a scene from a sci-fi movie. Okay, just make it a little bit more comfortable. A halo-wrapped patient pushed into a tube. We're ready to go. As a team of doctors manipulate his brain from the other side of the glass. Gain modulate high, power. modulate power, three minutes. Okay, we're ready to go. Dr. Ali Razai allowed us to witness his revolutionary attempt to use ultrasound to slow down the cognitive decline in three patients diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. It's never been done before. There's no miracle cures here. It's advancing medicine with calculated risks and pushing the frontiers. So we're targeting these areas. Dr. Razai and his team are focused on these red patches in the patient's brain scans. The red indicates the densest beta amyloid protein. That gummy protein is believed to play a major role in Alzheimer's by disrupting communication between brain cells. In people with Alzheimer's, it accumulates much faster. And over time, these protein aggregates, we call them plaques, like plaques in the arteries. They keep on accumulating and impacting function. There are two FDA-approved drugs on the market that can help break up that brain plaque. Aducanumab was approved in 2021, followed by lecanemab last year. Both are given intravenously, but they work slowly. Typically, you go into the clinic and you get an IV and you have the antibody infusion over one to two hours and you have to do it uh, once a month or twice a month for 18 months and longer. And during those 12 to 18 months, the brain is continuing to progress. Alzheimer's is not going away. It takes so long because the drugs have a hard time getting through something called the blood-brain barrier. This tight filter of cells line the blood vessels to keep toxins from leaking into the brain but it also prevents almost all of the medication from getting in, too. We think that that's what's causing the BB disruption by opening this year. Dr. Razai right? thought he could solve that problem with ultrasound. The same technology that's been used for 70 years to give doctors a view of organs and fetal development. Just so in. Good. You're good. Come back. He chose ultrasound because it easily penetrates the skull and can be focused, like sunlight through a magnifying glass, to help open the blood-brain barrier and allow the drugs to rush in. This way, we're getting the payload, the therapeutic payload, exactly to the area it needs to go with a high penetration. But we got to be careful because we want to be safe about this. You don't want to deliver too much. Don't want to open the blood-brain barrier too much. Because if you open it too much, what could happen? You can happen? get bleeding in the brain. You can get swelling in the brain. You can get many other problems. So you have to get it just right. We will show you exactly how that worked and the early results in a minute. But to understand why one of the country's most accomplished brain surgeons is betting on ultrasound... Okay, open and close your hands for me. You have to go back to 2002, when Dr. Razai first caught our attention in a story Morley Safer reported on treating Parkinson's disease. Look up, show me your teeth, stick a tongue out. Very good. Okay. Dr. Razai was among the first to implant a pacemaker-type device in the brain, which stopped uncontrollable movements suffered by Parkinson's patients. It's like traveling through a labyrinth, as in the uh, Greek myth. And around every corner, you have that bloodthirsty monster that can jump on you. So you want to be careful to avoid these areas. That kind of implant surgery is now routine for advanced Parkinson's. Dr. Razai went on to write hundreds of scientific papers, secure dozens of patents, and present his Parkinson's research to Congress and the White House. He could have gone to any big city research center, 
But true to form, he chose to try something different and moved to Morgantown, West Virginia, where he is the executive director of the Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute. It was a fantastic move because we're able to achieve so many things that would have been difficult at other institutions. Sometimes in the bigger institutions, you may not be hungry as much for it. You may have a thousand different agendas and priorities. Here, we think we have a very nimble and agile team that can quickly get outcomes. Like in 2019. Okay. This is video Dr. Razai's team took when they were among the first to use ultrasound to treat tremors. For 15 years, Dan Wall had been suffering from essential tremor, a neurological disorder. You okay? Yep. You got a hat on now. Okay. All right. Very good. Razai's team focused ultrasound into a part of the brain called the thalamus to destroy a pinpoint sized patch of tissue doctors believed was responsible for the tremors. These are the 980 elements converging right there. Wall was awake during the procedure. Touch my finger with your finger. After two hours, the 71-year-old's tremor was gone. I'm still afraid I'm going to drop it. Oh. <laughs> you got it. Uh, I've got it. Really good. Do you want to show, show off? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That success helped convince Dr. Zai Good morning. that focused ultrasound could be adapted to patients with other brain disorders, including Alzheimer's disease. My first symptoms that I noticed were that I was having trouble typing at work. Did you think you had Alzheimer's? No, I didn't. Dan Miller is just 61 years old. His wife, Kathy, began noticing changes four years ago. He kind of hit it pretty well. And then I noticed he was um, having trouble. His clothes would be backwards mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. Just little things. Just little things, yes. A scan of his brain revealed what Dan had been hiding. Mr. Miller had a very large amount of beta amyloid. The red spots indicated a buildup of those beta amyloid proteins, the so-called brain plaque, a marker of Alzheimer's. Dr. Razai explained to Miller he couldn't cure him of the disease, but he hoped to slow its progression. Why take part in the trial if it's not a cure? I have to explain to you that I was at the point, you know, like in Dante's Inferno, <laughs> where, where it says, abandon all hope, you who enter here. <laughs> For me, it was just, you know, let's do this, you know. What do I have to lose? And you are infusing, sir. You Here's how it worked. Hours before the procedure, Miller was given an IV treatment of aducanumab, one of those two new drugs to reduce beta amyloid plaque. Miller was then fitted with this million dollar helmet, similar to the one the team used to treat tremor patients. It directs nearly a thousand beams of ultrasound energy at a target the size of a pencil point. Basically, the patient lies on the MRI table and the head goes inside the helmet and the patient is immobilized with a halo or with a mouthpiece because we don't want movements to cause errors in our targeting in the brain. Is that comfortable? Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. Once inside, the MRI machine gave Dr. Razai a 3D view of the plaque he would target in Dan Miller's brain. The next step was an IV solution that contained microscopic bubbles. When hit with ultrasound energy, the bubbles pry open that blood-brain barrier. Okay, ready, we can sound again now. There we go. The bubbles start vibrating. They're moving. They're moving. They start expanding. So you can open the barrier temporarily. Now it's open for 24 to 48 hours and then it reseals. So this gives you a tremendous opportunity for 24 to 48 hours with the barrier being open. So now therapeutics can get inside the brain. You can't hear ultrasound. That noise is a signal to tell Razai's team the ultrasound is doing its work. Very nice opening of the blood-brain barrier. Each dot represents an area where all the waves, all the ultrasound waves converge and open the blood-brain barrier. So this is just one blast, if you will. One blast getting there. And you're hitting one point. One point, and then it moves to the next one. Even though patients were awake, they told us they didn't feel a thing. It all took a couple of hours, and they went home when it was over. The three patients were given the treatments of ultrasound with infusion once a month over six months. That's another target right there. The result? Beta amyloid plaque targeted with ultrasound were reduced 50% more 
than areas treated by infusion alone. That's the top of the head right there. Dr. Razai shared the three patients' brain scans with us. And the red indicates more density of beta amyloid plaques in the brain. So you can see as you treat it with ultrasound. Look closely at the areas outlined in white that were targeted with ultrasound and the drug. You get reduction. Whoa, that's right after. There. That's after you can see the plaques are very significantly reduced by opening the blood-brain barrier just in one area. Okay, lay back. Dan Miller and the third patient in the trial had larger areas of their brain targeted with ultrasound. And this is his baseline. And then you can see here wow. after 26 weeks, there was a very dramatic reduction in the beta amyloid in the areas as outlined by this white mark. And now we're going to look at patient number three. And this patient underwent antibody infusion therapy plus ultrasound. You can see this wow. area, which is really amazing. The ultrasound opened the blood-brain barrier and the antibody went in faster and cleaned out the plaques. What was your reaction when you saw this scan? Uh, I mean, my jaw dropped. I'm like, whoa. I, I was actually even in the clinic seeing patients and the PET scan technician called and said, oh yeah, there's a big change. I'm like, how do you know? We have to analyze it. He's like, no, you can see it on the screen. So, What did you think when Dr. Razai shared the, the scans with you? It was surreal. You can really see it. You don't have to be a doctor to understand no, what's going on there. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. Even the red is decreasing. That's amazing. And Kathy Miller says she can see it in her husband, too, who slips up once in a while but hasn't slipped further away. He has trouble finding things. I'll send him into the kitchen to get something, and he's like, it's not there. And I'm like, yes, it is. I can see it. But he can't see it. But if that's the worst, that's nothing. You'll take it. I'll take it. Do you feel hopeful about the future? I do, yes. I learned that what I needed to do is accept that the old Dan is gone and then start working on the new me, which has a future. Dr. Azai's team told us there's been no change in the ability of the three patients to do their daily activities since the ultrasound treatments ended in July. Now that Dr. Razai has shown Focus Ultrasound can clear beta amyloid plaques faster, he has FDA approval to use ultrasound to try and restore brain cell function lost to Alzheimer's. What's the result of breaking up all those plaques to the damage that's already been done to the brain? We don't know if it's going to reverse the damage to the brain because Alzheimer's, the underlying cause, is still occurring. So we have another study that we're looking at with ultrasound. First, clear the plaques, then deliver ultrasound in a different dose to see now if we can reverse it or boost the brain more for people with Alzheimer's. When we come back, we'll show you Dr. Razai's new way to use ultrasound to reset the brain and help people suffering from drug addiction. The human brain contains 100 billion neurons. That's as many cells as there are stars across the Milky Way. Dr. Ali Razai has spent 25 years exploring this frontier of medicine. The surgical techniques and therapies he pioneered are in use around the world. Dr. Razai allowed us to see his latest research over the last year at the Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute in Morgantown, West Virginia. It includes revolutionary treatments for a brain disease suffered by 24 million Americans, addiction. The results so far have been life-changing for the people we met once trapped by drugs. The story will continue in a moment. Looking back, I didn't have a chance. What do you mean you didn't have a chance? I couldn't do anything without having that drug um, in my system. Jared Buckhalter is the son of a coal miner. At six foot three, he was a high school football standout who dreamed of playing wide receiver at Penn State. But after a shoulder injury, he got hooked on painkillers. The very first time that I, that I took that first pill, um, I, I knew that I wanted that feeling for the rest of my life. What does it feel like? It's, it's just pure euphoria. He took us to where he said he often went to buy drugs, 
including heroin. Everybody in Morgantown knows to, to come here. Mm -hmm. Probably 17, 18 years old, you know, just a kid. Buckhalter um, still looks like an athlete. It's hard to imagine he was an addict for more than 15 years. He told us he does not remember how many times he overdosed and that he couldn't stay clean for more than four days at a time. I didn't know where I was going to sleep some nights. You know, my family didn't want me around anymore. Um, I just I did so many things to hurt them that, you know, it was just too much for them to deal with. Four years ago, a psychologist who'd worked with Buck Halter introduced him to Dr. Ali Razai, who was gearing up to perform a new kind of brain surgery to treat severe addiction. Our protocol was people that have failed everything. Once you've tried everything. Everything, residential programs, multiple failures, detox multiple times, outpatient, inpatient, multiple overdoses. I think he classified it as uh, end-stage drug user. I mean, end-stage makes you think that this is the end of your life. Correct. Um, and hearing that at the age of 34, um, it, it was crazy. Bring the DBS electrode in. Dr. Rezai thought he might be able to adapt technology he helped develop years earlier to treat Parkinson's disease to treat people with severe addiction. We've been able to map out with neuroscience imaging. There's a specific part of the brain that is electrically and chemically malfunctioning that is associated with addiction. So it's not just willpower. It's what's happening in the brain. It's a brain disease. It's an electrical and chemical abnormality in the brain that occurs over time with recurrent use of drugs. And this can be any substance. It's alcohol, can be opioids, amphetamines, cocaine, and they all are involving the same part of the brain. And so your idea was what with the implant? Parkinson's, we implant that in the movement part of the brain that is electrically malfunctioning, causing shaking. In this case, we're going into behavioral regulation, anxiety, and craving parts of the brain. Dr. Razai has seen the impact of addiction in his community. The problem is so severe in Morgantown, a vending machine dispenses the overdose antidote, Narcan, for free. You got your baselines? The National Institute on Drug Abuse agreed to support Dr. Razai's attempt to fight addiction with a brain implant. In 2019, the FDA gave him a green light to attempt the groundbreaking surgery. The cover, please. That is Jared Buckhalter. He agreed to be the first addiction patient in the U.S. to get the implant. Dr. Razai's team interviewed him the day before the surgery. The best outcome uh, possible would be, you know, just to cut the cravings out and, and make me feel a little bit better. If, you know, if those couple things happen, you know, uh, that's all I could possibly ask for. At that time, I was so desperate for a better life um, that I was willing to do just about anything, and I signed up to do it. I think some people might look at this and think an electronic implant in the brain sounds a little creepy. People, maybe 50 years ago, they say a implant in the heart sounds creepy. Now it's like normal. 25 years ago, people are saying, what are you doing? You're putting an implant in the brain for Parkinson's? But now it is routine part of standard of care for advanced Parkinson's. This is video from the seven hour procedure. Surgery so new, it didn't have a name yet. Dr. Azai opened a nickel-sized hole in Buckhalter's skull. Then he directed a thin wire with four electrodes deep inside. Jared, are you okay? Yes, sir. All right. Jared was awake during the surgery. Why was that necessary? To map the brain. We have tiny microphones the size of a hair we put inside the brain, and they're going slowly with micro robots. They go at increments of a thousandth of a millimeter. Very slow, we drive them into the brain, and we're listening to the neurons talking to each other. In addiction, we want to find the area in the reward center. So that confirms where we are in the brain. Once we listen, we say, okay, that's the right sound. Then we put the final therapeutic pacemaker. What does it sound like? Static electricity, which may be electricity to you, but is music to my ears. Music because Dr. Razai says it's a signal that he found the right spot in the brain for the implant. Once in place, the wire was connected to a device placed below the collarbone. Okay. The electrical pulses it sends to the brain are intended to suppress cravings. 
Buckhalter said it was painless. Post-surgery, the system is adjusted remotely with a tablet computer as needed. When they turned the unit on, it was an immediate change. What was the change? Just felt better, you know, just felt like I did prior to ever using drugs, but a little bit better. And it was at that point that I knew that I was going to have a legitimate shot at doing well. In all, four patients with severe drug addiction had the implant surgery. One had a minor relapse. Another dropped out of the trial completely. But two have been drug-free since their operations, including Jared Buckhalter, who's been clean for four years. If you hadn't met Dr. Rezai, if you hadn't gone through this implant, do you think you'd be sitting here talking to me today? You may be talking to my parents, you know, those that have lost their their loved ones to a drug overdose, um, but you wouldn't be talking to me. There's, there's no doubt about that. Ah, beautiful, uh, beautiful. Yeah. The surgery was a success, a but opening yeah. someone's skull is always risky. Dr. Rezai thought he could reach more patients quickly if he used ultrasound. He was already using it to treat other brain disorders and was convinced focused ultrasound could target the same area of the brain as the implant. Is this brain surgery without a knife? It is, indeed. So this is, there's no skin cutting, there's no opening the skull. So it is brain surgery without cutting the skin, indeed. Now this is just the measuring part, right? Dr. Zai explained how his team would be the first to treat addicts by aiming hundreds of beams of ultrasound to a precise point deep inside the brain. So the area that we're treating is the reward center in the brain, which is the nucleus accumbens, which is right down at the base of this dark area. And then we deliver ultrasound waves to that specific part of the brain, and we watch how acutely on the table your cravings and your anxiety changes in response to ultrasound. How is the ultrasound making a change here? Ultrasound energy is changing the electrical and chemical milieu or activity in this structure in the brain involving addiction and cravings. Just resetting them and giving them kind of a fresh start? At this point, it yeah. seems like the brain is being reset or rebooting of the brain, and the cravings are less, they're managed, anxiety is better. So now that allows them to interact with the therapist. It's very important to know that this is not a cure but an augmentation of the therapy by reducing the cravings and anxiety that's so overwhelming that the therapist has difficulty working with the patient. Last February, we watched Dr. Rezai use focused ultrasound to treat Dave Martin, who told us he's been surrounded by friends and family who use drugs his whole life. When did you start using drugs? Um, when I was seven years old. Seven? Yes. I did drugs for 37 years. What kind of drugs were you using? Anything I can get my hands on. Inside the MRI, Martin was shown these images of drug use to stoke his cravings. His legs were moving a lot and he's very agitated. A simultaneous brain scan allowed Dr. Rezai and his team to immediately spot the area in the nucleus accumbens that was most active. I'd like to see the targets one more time. 90 watts of ultrasound energy were beamed at a target the size of a gumdrop. Ready? Sonicate. Right, Within minutes, we noticed Martin's foot that had been anxiously bouncing was still. And he told Rezai's team that those same images of drugs he was shown earlier were now not sparking the need for a fix. Heroin is going down. Meth is also going down. Marijuana is down. Marijuana is down? A Good. lot, actually. Good. Keep on sonicating. The day of the procedure, it was the best day of my life. I didn't experience the same effect as like the times before. You didn't like, feel like I need that, I no, want that? No, I didn't feel like I needed the, the urge or the desire to use wasn't there anymore. So within 15 to 20 minutes of treatment, the craving and anxiety melts away. And we're seeing this pattern in multiple instances. Then they can walk away after this? There's they get no... off the table and go home. And how long does this entire procedure One hour. Take? One hour. One hour. Have you been around people still using drugs? Yes, yes. Unfortunately, I have. Um, and what happens? It didn't even trigger me. 
uh, I used to use intravenously with needles, and it was a, well, a little while ago, not too far back, but um, this one individual was trying to hit herself, and they couldn't hit, and they asked me, can, can you hit me? I Do you actually you put drugs yeah, in Yeah, I actually this stuck them, drew the blood back, you know. Now, before, when I drew the blood back, it would, like, make, make me sweat because mm -hmm. I couldn't wait to hit myself. But this time, it was just like, God, I hope they don't OD and I kill them here, you know. But I didn't have any urges or desire or anything, so. Dr. Azai's team told us Dave Martin did admit to taking one pain-killing pill at a party in December. Still... 10 of the 15 patients in the ultrasound clinical trials have remained completely drug-free. Dr. Ali Razai is trying the same ultrasound therapy on 45 more addiction patients and is already thinking about expanding the use of ultrasound to help people with other brain disorders, I want to get a bass here. including post-traumatic stress disorder and obesity. Let's do it again. Yeah. This is serious business. Research never been done before. We have to learn more. We have to replicate our findings. Is there any risk at running towards something quickly? There's always risk, but you cannot advance and make discoveries without risk. But we need to push forward and take the risk because people with addiction and Alzheimer's, it's not going away. It's here. So why wait 10, 20 years? Do it now.